Hi everyone, Darren here, and today's episode is going to be about distributors, specifically aftermarket units. And I'd like to go over the reasons why you want to use a new one versus repairing an old one. So stay with me while I go through the details on the differences between an original one, which is on the left, and a reproduction one on the right. The reproduction unit that I have here is a PowerSpark unit. They do not sponsor me in any way. I do use their products because I like the technology that they have in them. However, there are issues that you should be aware of. They cannot simply be put straight into a car. They must actually be tuned like everything else. And I'm going to go through some of the details about that with this unit in comparison to an original Lucas one. First off, I'd like to talk a little bit about why you would use a reproduction unit versus repairing an original Lucas. For starters, it takes a lot of effort to go through one of these to clean them and redo the springs and modify the weights and the cam to make them match the application or simply just get them back to a factory spec. These ones, uh, they're brand new. So first of all, they're extremely clean and working vacuum module. They also come with uh, high power ignition components such as we can see here this is the high power module which takes a 0.8 ohm coil these units typically are points or they'll have transistorized replacements such as this one has a this one has a patronics unit also they don't sponsor me as well now you can get a high power transistorized replacements for the original lucas units but they're expensive. PowerSpark has come up with this great module, or whoever their supplier is, has come, come up with this great module that fits inside their unit, but you cannot just put this unit into a standard Lucas. You'll notice here they have this square uh, cam, which provides the module with position information about when to trigger the ignition event. So you can't just transfer the technology into an original Lucas, you have to stick with this unit. However, so far, I have yet to see an issue with their technology. I think it's it's great that we can use a 0.8 ohm module or a 0.8 ohm coil with this module because it allows us to run cleaner and better mixtures. It also gives us more range as far as mixture that we can burn in our cars. So I think that's fantastic. One of the issues that I've noticed with these units is that they're inconsistent in terms of the position of their uh, in, uh, indexing cam down here. I forget what this is called exactly, but on the A-series engine and the A-plus, you'll notice that this pin is always positioned one way versus the hole. You can see it's, it's a bias. And that's to inter interlock into the drive gear in the, uh, in the block. Now, sometimes they fit these correctly and sometimes they have these units 180 degrees around. So when you go to fit this to the car, you'll find out, like, for example, this would be the standard firing position for cylinder number one, and the drive gear is positioned like that. Sometimes they'll have them 180 degrees out, so you'll go to fit them to the car, and you'll find out that you're actually firing cylinder number four instead of number one. So a lot of times I'll have to take these apart, spin these around, and put them back together again. Um, either I'll do it before I go out to the field, by checking the unit beforehand after I finished curving it, or uh, if I run into a situation with a car where it doesn't have it set up properly, I'll actually spin it around in the field. And it, it's removed with a hammer and punch. It's not that difficult. Another problem that I seem to come up with on these units is that their breaker plate has a little bit of play in it. I don't know if you can clearly see that, but the vacuum module spring, the hoop itself that attaches to the breaker plate pin here is a little bit large and so the whole unit can simply just move a small amount. Now that may not be, I'll zoom in here a little bit, that may not be a tragedy but it does make the ignition slightly less precise. So what I end up doing is I end up <clears throat> removing the uh, coil spring here and simply tightening up the coil until it grabs this and no more free play is detected. But that is one of the annoying features of these 
distributors. It's easily corrected, but if you don't know that what's going on, then you may not be able to fix it and you might have some timing error. Not much, but enough to enough to bother me. And I certainly wouldn't want that on, on my car if I was really going for a precise ignition timing. Another problem with these 25D units is that they're, um, <clears throat> they have this uh, adjuster nut down here and the guys simply used a O-ring to hold it in, whereas the original Lucas actually has a nice metal metal clip to prevent the cam this little cam wheel from winding itself off if you're trying to make timing adjustments. Uh, this is not a big problem, but what I do is I take this off and I replace it with a small uh, small E-clip. Another problem I've found is that this wheel rubs against the aluminum body. There's usually a lot of flashing in um, inside of this area here that tends to uh, rub up against the uh, this adjuster nut. <clears throat> also, sometimes these adjuster nuts are very rough. The, it looks like a machine somehow grabs this slot and, and damages the edges, so a lot of times there's just burrs and things. So I'll usually take a piece of sandpaper and knock that off on these units on both sides as well. Additionally, there is less adjustment with this system than an original 25D. So the manual says that there's 55 clicks of this knurled adjuster nut in this vacuum module. And if you look at these marks here, I've marked the minimum and maximum position. And on the power spark unit, you have about half that amount because of the way they manufactured the space and the way that this piece is manufactured. And also there's a difference in depth along the vacuum module here. I'll see if I can compare it to this one here. You can see how much larger that piece is than on this. So what happens is that this one can move further down until it rests against the body, whereas this one does not have that much range of motion. Which means that when you're adjusting this unit, it, it just simply stops against the vacuum module. I'll, I'll demonstrate here. So right now I have it, I believe, fully, uh, fully retarded the nut all the way up. If I wind this out, I'll go ahead and make a mark on this unit. All right, so I've marked that position. I'm gonna go ahead and advance the uh, whole system. So there's also a lot of free play. It's just a sloppy design. That's about it. So comparing the two sets of marks, that's a wide sweep. That one's very, very narrow. So just be aware of that in case you expect this to have the same amount of adjustability that your old Lucas is, but this one does not. Also, another problem is that the adjuster nut on these reproduction units, uh, sometimes it's just seized or really, really difficult to turn. This is a replacement module for these distributors that I have here, but you can see how smoothly this nut turns. Well, this is only because I ran a 1032 tap across these threads and also the nut itself. Um, I think what happens is that their plating just builds up inside these threads and then the nut doesn't turn. But um, you'll find that they're quite difficult to turn out of the box. And so I, I typically take the unit out and like I said, run a, run a tap and die through the, through both sets of threads here and on the nut as well. Sometimes I've found that these nuts are actually drilled at an angle. So the whole nut will wobble, which is not great, but just, you know, the quality of an aftermarket unit versus an original Lucas. There's also no locking tab per se. So this original Lucas unit here, you'll notice there's a, a little metal clip right here, which locks this nut. On um, on this guy, the power spark unit, there's no clip 
It's just the tension of the spring pushing the nut against the aluminum body here that keeps it from moving. So it could rattle off, I suppose, which is why I take this O-ring out and replace it with a, uh, a small E-clip. That's a one eighth inch size E-clip. Another couple of minor detail differences between the Lucas and a PowerSpark unit is that the way that these clips work, you can see there's a, a riveted pin through here, and you know the, the clip obviously hangs off of it. On the uh, this version, it's this sort of bent piece of metal pin thing. Uh, looks bad, but you know, it does the job. They also come pre-wired for connections to work right in the harness, so the short black one here connects straight into the original points connection on the harness, and then you have to run this longer one out to the coil to provide the module with power. And finally, as I've mentioned in the previous videos, these have roughly 8 to 12 degrees of advance, total advance timing with the cams that are built into these units. Uh, these PowerSpark units have 20, which is far too much. So if you're gonna use one of these, you really need to get it tuned because 40 degrees of advance is far too much. Um, you'll have too much at the top end and not enough at the low end. And it's just, it's not great for the engines and you risk damaging one if you try setting this up to match the timing specs that this one was originally designed for. So just be aware that you can't just stick these in the car and go. Now, if you did, it'll probably run okay at certain RPMs, but like I said, the springs in these units are too stiff initially, so the advance is very slow. And then, uh, like I said, the overall advance is way too much. So if you timed it at top dead center, this would actually produce 40 degrees of advance at say, five and a half thousand RPMs or something. And uh, none of these engines needed 40 degrees of advance at that point. At most they were in the 30s, low 30s. So that could potentially damage an engine if it's not adjusted accordingly. So that's my take on these units. Um, hope you guys found that to be useful or interesting. Let me know if you have any questions about these units. Um, like I said, I, I order them and I, again, from PowerSpark directly. Those guys are good to work with if you're interested in getting one. They do have other versions. Um, they sell points type, and then they'll sell you the standard module with the 3 ohm coil or the uh, 0.8 ohm high power module. And um, it just depends on what you prefer. Like I said, I prefer using the high power with the high power coil just to get me a little extra energy, which is actually particularly useful for cars that have emissions. You've seen some of the previous videos, perhaps, that uh, on the cars that I had posted about the emissions testing, I was running one of these, and I was able to get Lambda 1 at idle. So that would pass pretty much any emissions test you could throw at it. Um, whereas this one, with a standard igniter unit and a 3 ohm coil, I would not be able to reach Lambda 1. I could probably get 0.95 to 0.97, somewhere in that range. So you're looking at like 1.5 CO, and uh, that may or may not be sufficient depending on the age of the vehicle. So if you guys like this video, let me know what you think about it in the comments section. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to make another video if you guys want some more in-depth knowledge about some particular aspect about these units. And uh, like I said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in another video.